Another great reason to use matchlocks is that they're anti-cav. We all remember the Battle of Nagashino, right? Hey, I'm Triple Z Hacker, and I am back with more Total War Shogun 2. Now, if there's one thing I know, it's that most Shogun 2 players love Chad Ashigar units and love pieces. Your, your pieces? My gun! Oh, I, anyway, I started blast! I too love Ashigar units and guns. It's what makes Shogun 2 such a great game. But imagine. Por que no las dos? Yes, that's right, the best of both worlds, Matchlock Ashigaru, lowly peasants with tiny sticks that go boom. All memes aside, in this video, I'm going to list five reasons why this unit can be one of the most efficient and devastating in Shogun 2. As always, subscribe if you enjoy my content and love this glorious game. So, for this video, I'm taking into account how Matchlock Ashigaru perform in both campaign and in multiplayer, so keep that in mind. However, before I begin to explain why Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent, I'll start with a brief overview of the unit. Of course, there's no perfect unit in Shogun 2. Every unit can be countered in a variety of ways, and as most of you are aware, Matchlock Ashigaru are far from perfect. However, the purpose of this video is to suggest and analyze ways to optimize their potential. They do not have impressive stats at all. Their low morale, along with their terrible reload speed and accuracy, does not make them the ideal marksman for your armies. Additionally, their low armor also makes them extremely vulnerable to bow units, which outrange them. Another important factor is that matchlocks need a clear line of sight, otherwise they will not shoot, so make sure they're not obstructed by terrain. Although these drawbacks are important to consider, some of them are quite misleading, and throughout the rest of the video, I'll discuss all the positive aspects that can make Matchlock Ashigaru valuable. With that, let's begin. The first and best aspect of Matchlock Ashigaru is their cost efficiency. Like any Ashigaru unit, they're exceptionally cheap to recruit and have a low upkeep cost. Even as they accumulate ranks through battle or receive upgrades, they're still cost effective. In the campaign, Matchlock Ashigaru can easily receive accuracy upgrades through the Craftworks building chain, along with a Hunter's Lodge from the encampment. As you can see here, superior accuracy grants them a total of 50 accuracy and they're still super cheap to recruit and maintain through upkeep. With exceptional accuracy, they receive a total of 60 accuracy and again, still only 195 Koku to recruit and 85 for the upkeep. A bargain for such a powerful unit. Now this is for the Otomo clan. So for the other clans, aside from the Oda and Hattori, Matchlock Ashigaru are 300 to recruit and 100 for upkeep in the campaign which is still really cost effective. In multiplayer, cost efficiency is essential to your army compositions. Also, the veteran upgrade system works well with Ashigaru units. Matchlock Ashigaru, for instance, can increase their reload skill, accuracy, and even attain abilities such as Rapid Volley. With the proper optimization of veteran upgrades, this unit is formidable in Avatar Conquest battles. In fact, you can only bring three of them in your army, so this unit limit just demonstrates how great Matchlock Ashigaru are in multiplayer. Although this is not related to their cost efficiency, it's important to remember that as an Ashigaru unit, they're larger than any of the other units in the game, which is very crucial for Matchlock units as the first rank is wider, so that means there's just more guns shooting for each volley. The second reason why Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent is their defensive siege supremacy. It's no secret that guns are brilliant in defensive situations, and this is especially true when it comes to defensive sieges. Matchlock Ashigaru tend to get several hundred to even upwards of thousands of kills when defending castles. The AI is way too predictable and desperately throws their forces to the walls. As you can see here, Matchlocks in the right position annihilate even the strongest of samurai units. Even with just a few in your armies, you can earn heroic victories against foes that greatly outnumber you. Historically, guns were also successful in this regard, as monks trained with guns held back even Oda Nobunaga. As you can see based off the following battle clip, Matchlock Ashigaru, when placed in strategic locations or choke points, are able to inflict tons of casualties upon enemy units, and even rout some before they reach the walls. This just goes to show how overpowered Matchlock Ashigaru are in defensive sieges, which is no secret and most of you were probably already aware of this. But still, I mean, just look at this. Volley after volley, just shredding men left and right. It's glorious to watch. I like this. This is cute. If we take a look at the stats from the battle, you can see that Matchlock Ashigaru clearly were the reason that I won this defensive siege. I mean, look at those kills. 270, 166, 
It's just really impressive and goes to show why Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent in defensive sieges. The third reason that Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent is that they are morale killers. Their gun volleys disorient enemies, weakening their morale and disrupting any frontal charges. In Shogun 2 battles, morale is the most vital thing as mass routes are common and units can be broken in a variety of fashions. The following few examples demonstrate the effectiveness of Matchlock Ashigaru when routing units. Alright, so the first example of Matchlock's weakening enemy unit morale is going to be this little custom battle I've set up on Kanto Plains. I'm playing as a Tokugawa with about 7 Matchlock Ashigaru. The Takeda have 2 Katana Samurai and 2 Yari Samurai, so... My army costs about 2,800 Koku, and their army costs 2,900. So not only will this demonstrate how morale is absolutely destroyed by matchlock volleys, but also how cost-efficient matchlock Ashigaru are as a unit too. And uh, I sped things up just because the AI has to rush me. Put all my units with some bamboo wall here. Two rows, very, very standard approach on how to use matchlocks here. So you can see the first couple of volleys already began to fire. And not really too many kills, but again, it's not really kills that we're after here. We're just trying to shatter units as quickly as possible. Or in an efficient manner, I should say. Because it's not really a quick fashion, but... And the AI, you know, they're pretty stupid, so they'll just blindly rush you. Um, I mean, already lost, like, 30 men and a couple of units. So, just goes to show that... Matchlocks can just kill you from a distance really, really easily. And uh, you don't really have to take these fights here with this match, these Matchlock Ashigaru units. I just rush them back. And you got the next row of Matchlocks already ready to fire. So this Katana Samurai units got 103 men, only killed 16. This one's got about 112, 133, so already suffering tons of casualties. You can see that they're uh, shaken, tired. <laughs> concern losing the combat flanks exposed somehow and look at that wavering 70 yeah that's just unbelievable and this this right here is just i mean look at that broken tired 56 55 men left and only 24 kills katana samurai 750 koku worth as well and just absolutely shattered and you can see the same happening to this katana samurai unit just the superior firepower of all these guns firing at once on a concentrated mass of enemy units it's devastating and this is exactly how like nobunaga used a lot of this and look at that completely shattered and that's the epitome of what match loss can do when killing enemy unit morale and that's the perfect example of it all right, so for the second example of Matchlock Ashigaru killing enemy units morale, I've set up another custom battle here playing as the Oda versus the Shimazu. And basically, for my army composition, I have four Matchlock Ashigaru here. The second rank is four Oda Long Yari Ashigaru, and the third rank is Nodachi Samurai. Now, for this scenario, the Matchlocks take on a more supportive role in the combat, whereas previously I've shown them to be the focus of the battle. So based off the formation, I have pretty much four separate Tercio-styled, I guess, groups set up where you have the guns in the front, the spears support the guns from frontal charges, and the swords support the spears in the melee. And of course, they all work in tandem together. Now, the way this sort of works is that once the AI or your opponent approaches, your guns get off initial volley to soften up their ranks, and then you can either pull back to get off more volleys, which I'll show later in the video, or you can sort of just begin to fight the melee. And as you can see, I mean, look at these casualties sustained already. Like, almost 30 from that unit. This unit's lost 40 already. These Katana Samurai here, just from the gun volleys alone. Of course, you can pull back the entire formation if you want. But uh, for this battle replay and for demonstrating the more subtle way in which matchlocks kill morale... Pretty much what you want to do is just put your spears, at least if you have Yaris in the Yari wall. Then you want to have your Nodachi support in the melee as well. You want to pull your guns back as much as you can. And then pretty much as you'll see throughout the battle, you can see the bonsai is going off in the Nodachis. But um, you'll have these gaps here in the line, like right here, for instance. And you can have these matchlocks shoot through the gaps. You can also flank with the matchlocks around the front line to shoot in the back of enemy units and that helps 
weaken their morale immensely. But pretty much the melee units are doing most of the work and the matchlocks are just supporting. Of course, Nodachis are really great for this because Nodachis have Bonsai so they can get shot in the back and still not waver. You can see their morale bar is not even fluctuating at all and they're getting shot by their own men. And over here, like, you can see, you know, the OD units are generally just better. But, I mean, even still, like, generals getting shot here because these matchlocks have, you know, clear line of sight to these units. You can see over here that... The casualties sustained alone is too much, and even though these katanas are winning over here, they're getting shot to pieces, and you can see they're tired, friends are routing, casualties sustained. You can see the same thing over here with matchlocks shooting in the back of these Yari Samurai here, routing them as well. So the matchlocks just play such a supportive role in causing such a mass rout. And so this is just another way in which matchlocks can kill enemy units morale. The fourth reason Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent is that they can function as a counter to any unit type due to their immense killing potential. Because, you know, Matchlocks go boom. Obviously, their bullets easily pierce through armor, so no unit aside from Bulletproof Samurai can survive an onslaught of Matchlock volleys. Of course, Matchlock Ashigaru still remain vulnerable while reloading or repositioning, so they require precise micromanagement to fully optimize them. As you all saw in the earlier examples, the ability to deploy bamboo walls that establish defensive positions enables Matchlocks to have some protection from frontal assaults. Usually a few spear units and support works well too. Even without bamboo walls though, they can be just as deadly. In the next part of the video, I'm going to further explain and demonstrate how Matchlock Ashigaru have great killing potential against any unit type. The last and final reason why Matchlock Ashigaru are magnificent is that gun units are the masters of controlling space on the battlefield. With the proper positioning, they can dominate, especially with their ability to kite units to oblivion. This battlefield dominance, along with their immense killing power, make Matchlock Ashigaru a unit to be feared. The following battle replay demonstrates these principles and encapsulates the brilliance of these peasant gunners. Alright, so here's the battle replay that demonstrates how Matchlock Ashigaru can establish battlefield dominance through positioning, controlling space, and kiting. Before I begin though, I'd like to preface this battle with a few things. First and foremost, this tactical approach is not unbeatable and there's a variety of ways to counter it, as with anything in Shogun 2, but I think it's a fun and optimal way to utilize matchlocks. Also, I actually got the inspiration for making this video when playing multiplayer recently, and I started to notice a trend of matchlocks being used in this fashion with great success. Now, it's dubious as to whether this will be as effective in your campaigns, but it's entirely possible when given the ideal conditions of a flat map and tons of space to maneuver. All right, with that, let us begin this battle. Of course, as you already noticed, I'm playing as the Oda versus the Tokugawa, and my army composition, as you'll see, is quite unique, but I have about nine Matchlock Ashigaru here, so three in the front, three in the center, and then three in the rear. And then I have a collection of spears, about six units of Yaris defending. I have two Bow Ashigaru, and then I have two Yari Cav. And of course, you need those other units just to support. Especially you want them in the campaign, for instance, and in multiplayer it is nice to have some bows and to have some melee units and some cav just to counter the other unit types that you might see from your opponents. Now, the way this army functions is that you have these three matchlocks in the front who fire the initial volley and then they pretty much just keep retreating back and back. And the second row of matchlocks will fire their volley and then repeat and then pretty much it's just a cycle and it's a rinse and repeat sort of continues over and over again it's it's quite vicious to be honest because these matchlocks just rack up tons and tons of kills or at least the kills are spread pretty evenly throughout each of them now for this actual battle the tokugawa ai is pretty passive so i'm gonna skip forward all right so here's where the battle begins now the tokugawa ai is active of course i had to skirmish a little bit with my bows and kill off one of their ashigaru units over here that's what you guys basically missed but Again, this is kind of what you want from your opponents or from the AI or whomever you're fighting to pretty much just rush this type of army because, as I mentioned earlier, these guns will pretty much just keep kiting back and back and back on the battlefield. And um, another thing to mention with the use of Matchlock Ashigaru here is that they really, you know, act as like, uh, you know, a very suppressive unit because especially in multiplayer it's very costly to send like katana samurai for instance just straight into guns because as you'll see with this volley i mean it, it just gets rid of so many of them and they're you know 
this this is not cost effective to do something like that. And even with cav like over here, you know, um, of course this is like some light cav, but uh, matchlock shooting cav, for instance, like just charging cav straight in is not ideal either. Now, of course, once the first wave of matchlocks have fired, I have some spears just pretty much set up to brunt the initial charge, but it's not entirely, you know, needed. But this army does require a lot of micromanagement, so I'm a bit sloppy in certain moments. But um, again, you know, you see these matchlocks falling back from these Yariyashigaru over here. And then in the center, it doesn't really matter if I lose these spear units. Of course, in campaign, you'd probably play this differently, but still, you know, the matchlocks here are what we're focusing on, which, again, they're doing their job by just putting bullets into these samurai charging. And you can see here, you know, just firing into volley after volley, and um, the melee units and, you know, other range units, the bows and the cav, are just mainly acting as supports. But, um, you know, again, it, it's a really effective tactic when used properly, and sometimes you can get caught, like, here, but even still, you know, 94 Ashigaru remaining in this unit that are wavering as they're getting into melee and just routing <laughs> on contact, which is just really interesting. Then over on this side, you can see matchlocks just... <laughs> Casually running through rice fields over here trying to get back and um, again, you know fresh guns here to pretty much just Take their place and put bullets once more into enemies, which is really nice to see And of course, you know the spears do their job by just holding certain places you send the cabin Occasionally and this is why it's so successful in multiplayer because you're not so concerned about losing units whereas campaign You know you don't really want to lose your armies still though in campaign I think this could be viable in certain scenarios and you can see, like, the matchlocks racking up a good, decent amount of kills ever so often. And they're doing their main job of just routing units here. I mean, just look at the Tokugawa's army, completely scattered. And most of the matchlocks still largely intact. I mean, this unit will come back. You got matchlocks all the way over here, for instance. And this unit's already in the red, morale-wise, you can see. And, I mean, not a lot of kills either for most of these melee units. I mean, this Yari Samurai here... Doing pretty good though, kill wise, but still, I mean, routing at this point, probably because they got a lot of melee kills. But even still, it's really just a fun tactic to use. It requires a lot of micro, as I mentioned earlier, but I mean, you can see its effectiveness on display and these match locks just dominating everything because they can just fall back and just keep shooting, and the morale shock is too much, and the killing power is just too much. I mean, just causes so much death, and it enables the other units here, like the support units, the cav, the bows, to also shine. And this works effectively, you know, pretty much with a lot of the clans. And in multiplayer, you'll, for instance, see, like, more elite gun units taking up the second and third ranks. So, like, matchlock samurai, Portuguese tercios, heavy gunners even, although that's kind of rare to use them because they're pretty expensive. But again, you know, just a variety of ways in which you can play in this sort of style, which is really nice. And you can see even these Bowashigaru here, you know, they're just going to get shot by matchlocks and route all the same. And, I mean, again, you know, just goes to show that this, you know, matchlock Ashigaru unit, very cheap cannon fodder-like unit, has so much power when used in the optimal fashion. And I mean, the Oda, of course they're very powerful so it, it kind of works with the Oda really really well but I mean again you know all you have left is barely any Tokugawa forces and the general is just getting shot <laughs> and I mean you know 78 kills for this matchlock unit 64 here 90 I mean this one has 125 for instance 107 for this 101 so again they can get a ton of kills here. I mean, you know, these long Yari Ashigaru, of course, will get a ton of kills as well as supporting units, but the matchlocks carrying, you know, I mean, with nine matchlocks in your army and them getting all the kills, but yeah, you can kind of see here pretty much just mass route with the rest of the Tokugawa forces, and again, this battle replay just goes to show how this one tiny unit, these little peasants here with their little boomsticks, can be such a magnificent and potent unit to use in Shogun 2. I hope you enjoyed and found this video on Matchlock Ashigaru informative. Once again, if you enjoy my content, be sure to like and subscribe for more Shogun 2. As always, take care you guys.